Hello and welcome to this lesson on acoustic treatment for your home recording studio. Are you having some trouble with taming low bass in your room? Maybe you're looking into a bass trap and you've heard the bass traps don't work so why should I get some? Or maybe you have a mix where you play it on the car and you're like oh my god where is the bass or whoa there's way too much bass in my mix. Or maybe you are hearing your speakers and you just want to have a clear, more precise visual picture in your speaker's reference. If that's the case, then this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about a better bass trap. This is going to be a Hemholtz slot resonator bass trap, and I'll talk more about what that technically means and how to build it and all that fun stuff, and why this bass trap is better than your typical just fiberglass insulation frame it out and put some cloth over it and stick it in the corner of your room. So stick around. Before we jump in, I do have a free resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide. If you're going down the road of acoustically treating your room, this will be helpful. And you can download it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, enough of me blabbering here. Let's jump in to this lesson on how to tame those low bass frequencies in your room. Okay, so first off, we just have to do a little quick understanding of the different types of room treatments. You've got your typical velocity-based traps. This means insulation traps where velocity, I'm talking about just sound waves hitting the insulation and it changing into heat because as the sound wave hits an insulated panel, it's converted to heat and then there's an airspace behind that panel and it hits the wall and it helps all the way down to 125 hertz. The problem is that these panels are great and I highly recommend them in your room. However, when it comes to low frequencies below 125 hertz, it's really hard for these panels to really do a dent in the low frequency spectrum. In fact, most of them can't reach it at all. Uh, if you put enough absorption in your room, it might help with the low end, but really you need something more precise. And that's where pressure traps come in. And there's two main types of pressure traps. There's your diaphragmatic, panel absorber traps, and I have another video that I did last week on that. And then this week, we're gonna be talking about another type, which are called Hemholtz resonators, or Helmholtz resonators. And these use a different type of technology where sound is actually going through a hole, a perforated hole, or in this case, I'm gonna be talking about slats between two pieces of wood, and then having a sealed airspace behind that. And that creates the mass spring effect that, in basically will eliminate or attenuate certain specific frequencies in your room that are causing problems. So all this said, I know it's kind of complicated, but this is a much better tool than just putting a quote unquote base trap in your corner that doesn't have any sort of membrane or any kind of pressure treatment that can affect the low end. All right, so this trap is hard enough to talk about, so I'm gonna show you a picture. This is a picture of a diagram of one that I designed recently in my CAD software, and this shows a trap that can treat down to 46 hertz, which is pretty awesome. So basically, it's similar to your typical bass trap. You would put it in your corners, and it would go floor to ceiling. Another thing that's really important to realize is that corners is are where all of the modes in your room terminate. That means all of the frequencies that are bouncing around in your room, all these low bass frequencies, they all end up piling up in your corners. So it's a great place to put acoustic treatment because that's going to be where you can attack all the frequency problems in your room in one location. Notice this trap is built with uh, just two by fours, making a frame Then we got some insulation on the inside, two, two inch Corning 703 insulation. I put some Guilford of Maine fabric over top of it or any sort of fabric that's acoustical, meaning you can blow through it and feel the air on the back of your hand. And then lastly are the wood slats, which is creating our Hemholtz resonator. And the key with these wood slats, which I'm gonna talk about in a second here, is the actual math equation we use to figure out the frequency. But essentially, the depth behind the back of the wood slats to the wall, plus the distance between the wood slats, plus the width of the wood slats themselves, plus the thickness of the wood slats, all will determine which frequency you are targeting. So to do this, we need a specific formula. And let's talk about that now. So the calculation is as follows. Frequency equals 2160 times the square root 
of R divided by the effective depth of the slot D times the depth of the box behind the slot times the slot width times the slot, the slot width times the slat width. Now, I laugh because this is a ridiculously complicated formula. However, uh, let me go over this a little bit more clearly. So the little d in the formula equals the effective depth, which is 1.2 times the actual slot thickness. R equals the slot width. W equals the slat width, meaning the width of the piece of wood. And the big D equals the depth of the space behind our wood slats, meaning to that corner. So in a corner, our depth is gonna vary at every part of the, the uh, base absorber. So which is a good thing actually, because it allows us to treat many more frequencies more easily. All right, so no one wants to do that math. So you have two options. There's some great calculators on the internet. You just gotta be careful, make sure they're legitimate. I have a link to one below in uh, the notes below this video that I used for this video and it was helpful, it's legit. Um, or you can plug in this formula into a spreadsheet and then just start messing around with different numbers in it and trying to figure out uh, what will work best. What I personally like to do is I know I have a, uh, I can measure the slot depth in my CAD program and I can figure out, okay, at this depth uh, or at this point in the plans here, I can get this um, slat width at a certain point and then I know the depth and I can plug it into the calculation and figure out exactly what frequency I want to target. So definitely some math involved. This is why these are not sold widely. This is why they're not recommended all the time, but they do work and it does help you get down to that below 120 for 25 Hertz uh, frequency range. So let me go a little bit more in depth on what I'm showing you guys here. So you can see in this diagram, uh, I mentioned before we're using a two by four on the bottom plate, a two by four on the top plate and two by fours on the side plate that are going to be a little bit longer. And then you're going to fill that framing in with a uh, two inch Corning 703 insulation. And then you're gonna put, I like to use Guilford of Maine fabric. It's really high quality and it works for acoustic projects like this one and staple that fabric over top of the wood frame. And then you're gonna put your wood one by six wood slats across the frame and then measure the distance between your wood slats to try to target the frequencies that you need in your room. And then you'll know also you can measure the depth from that wood slat to the wall behind it to get that right frequency. Now your next question is gonna be, okay, sweet. This is not a broadband uh, base trap, which is what we're used to. Just like throw a base trap in the corner. Awesome, I'm set. No, we need to know which frequencies we really wanna treat for this base absorber trap to work efficiently. And this is where we need either a room mode calculator that can predict, but honestly, the best thing you can do is to measure your room once it's all done and figure out what problem frequencies you have. This can be before you put any acoustic treatment in the room and you can start to see, okay, what, how is my room reacting with low frequencies? And then once you do that, so using something like Room EQ Wizard and a measurement mic, and there's lots of great YouTube videos on the internet, internet of how to do that, you can figure out which low frequencies are ringing out in your room on the spectrogram and, and also the delayed reverb time of so those lower frequencies. And you can pinpoint those and say, okay, like at 60 Hertz, I've got a room mode that's ringing out in my room. It's causing issues at my listening position. I'm going to build my slat resonator to focus on hitting that 60 Hertz range. And so the width of your slat would then be determined to focus on getting that 60 Hertz and also the depth. Uh, we can keep the one by six wood slats the same and that just reduces one more variable in the equation. Or you can vary the thickness of the wood and the width of the wood and that will also help you figure out exactly how to target that 60 Hertz frequency. So again, some math, uh, not so super impossible, uh, but definitely some more mental work. And then the last thing I'll say is that a 16th of an inch can make a big difference in which frequency you are targeting. So if you make a mistake down to a 16th of an inch, uh, you might end up targeting the wrong frequency and the trap may not work the way you want it to. So again, we need a lot of precision when we're building these, a lot of measuring when you're building them.
All right, so in conclusion, this video is meant to be a kind of an overview and a general idea. I'm not exactly showing you the plans of how to build it, but I wanted to give you a general idea of how you could build these. And if you wanna venture down this path um, more deeply, um, you can definitely let me know in the comments. And there's also a lot of great books out there. The Roger Weiss book is where I got these plans from and then kind of redid them for myself to make it a little bit more accurate. But it's really up to you if you wanna use these traps. I do think they are a great way to fine tune the base in your room. Plus they look aesthetically cool cause you got these wood, wood, uh, tra wood slats uh, going up and down on your wall back walls and in your corners and stuff. So definitely an interesting option. And if anyone's trying to sell you base traps that are just using insulation, just know that it's not really technically a base trap. It's helping control the room. There's no doubt about that. I'm using them in my room. If I could redo my room over again, sure. I would totally rethink how I would do my acoustic treatment, focusing more on the low end and focusing on trying to treat the whole room, not just the mid to high frequencies. All right, if you guys have found this helpful, again, I have that free resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide going over how to basically set up your room so it sounds great in your mixes and recordings and mastering. So to check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. Thank you.